I'm Kyle with Fundamentals of Finance, and today I'll be answering the question, is now a good time to invest in China? Hint, hint, I kind of think it is, and I'm going to get into it here. This video actually comes by popular demand because some of you have been asking if it was a good time to invest in Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba. Well, while I can't give individual investment advice on this channel, and I never recommend that anyone invest in individual stocks for reasons I'll get to in a second, I do think it's a good opportunity for me to make a video on why I am excited about the investment opportunity I see in China right now. So the bulk of this video will cover the five reasons that I'm excited to invest in China today. But before we get into that, I just wanna make a brief statement about giving advice and buying individual stocks. First, I don't give investment advice on this channel because I believe that it has to be personalized. And I obviously don't know your situation. Second, I simply don't believe it's a good idea for anyone to buy individual stocks. Even when I do talk about investments with my friends and family, I still tell them not to buy individual stocks and I don't even do it myself. There are two reasons I generally think it's a bad idea for most people to buy individual stocks. First, it takes an unbelievable amount of research to adequately analyze a company, build a model to project out its earnings and cash flows, and stay up to date with every regulation, industry update, etc that can possibly impact its stock price. Unless you are a professional portfolio manager that dedicates their whole career to analyzing companies, I think it's very hard to be successful. And even if you are, is it worth your time? The second reason is that no matter how thorough your research is, you always leave yourself vulnerable to the Enron situation, which means that it's always possible that there's some hidden accounting scandal or something like that that you couldn't possibly predict that will drive the stock price to zero. That's just not a risk that I think is worth taking because buying individual stocks really doesn't usually offer that much more upside potential than buying a basket of stocks like an ETF or a mutual fund. If you think you have some specific insight that other people don't have, as long as it's not insider information or something like that, I wouldn't say you should never take a position no matter what, but I do think that buying individual stocks is generally a bad idea for most people in most situations. So essentially, it takes more time, involves more risk, and it's unlikely to lead to consistently better results over time. Actually, much worse for the typical novice investor if history is our guide. So what I own to invest in China is an ETF with the ticker YINN, YIN. Now, this is a 3x leveraged China ETF, which means that it is extremely risky and volatile, and it's definitely not for everyone. As I've mentioned in other videos, I'm a very aggressive investor with my own money, and it's also... Not like this position is 80% of my portfolio. But if you wanted to invest in China and just take a normal amount of risk, you could consider a fund like Matthews China, which has a ticker of MCHFX. I would consider this to be among the highest quality China funds because Matthews has an expertise in Asia that's hard to find at most other firms. And that knowledge and experience can be really valuable in hard to navigate markets like China. So this brings us to the five reasons why I'm excited to invest in China right now which is late June, early July, 2022. The first reason is because we're starting from a low base, a very low base. Using the iShares MSCI China ETF in dark blue as a proxy for Chinese equities and the S&P 500 in light blue as a proxy for US equities, you can see that the US markets hit their high in January, 2022 and fell over 24% to their low in June. That's pretty bad, but the Chinese equity market actually peaked almost a year earlier in February 2021 and fell more than 55% to its low in March of this year. By contrast, the S&P 500 fell about 57% during the financial crisis from its high in 07 to its low in 09. We've seen that kind of decline in Chinese equities, yet it's pretty hard to argue their situation is nearly as dire as what we experienced in 08. So are there risks? Absolutely. That's why it's down so much. And I'll be sure to cover those at the end. But despite the risk, and the fact that the market has recovered a bit from its lows, on a long-term view, I think there's still a solid opportunity in Chinese equities from here, even if there's more short-term downside. So reason number one is that it's fallen a lot already. But just because something is down doesn't necessarily mean it's going back up. It was down a lot nine months ago, but now it's down a lot more. So when you're buying an investment that you think is cheap or on sale after it's gone down a lot, the first consideration should be why has it gone down and the second should be, why do you think the things that were weighing on it will turn around? I would break this into three reasons, and my optimism around each of those will be the next three reasons I'm excited to invest in China. The challenges in the Chinese equity market really date back to 2018 
for those of you who aren't close China watchers. Beginning in 2018, Donald Trump waged a trade war on China. Ever since then, it's become very popular in American politics to take a tough on China stance. In fact, that may be the only thing that Democrats and Republicans can agree on these days. First, Donald Trump started putting tariffs on Chinese goods, but those didn't have the desired effect. They were actually mostly paid for by US consumers. Chinese companies just raised prices to compensate for the extra tariffs, and we paid the higher prices at home. Then, later on, a lot of companies started sending things through other countries like Vietnam to avoid the tariffs. But that was more of a 2018 story. And as I mentioned, the Chinese market topped out in 2021. After tariffs, the US-China trade spat has morphed into a few other things, like threatening to delist Chinese companies from US stock exchanges and blocking key technology exports. Blocking exports has had a much bigger impact on certain companies, including nearly putting Huawei, arguably their most successful global company, out of business. The trade spat has continued under Biden and has further weighed on Chinese equities over the past year. But in my opinion, the impact on stock prices has been greater than the actual impact on companies in some cases, which is reason number two that I'm excited to invest in China. Is the trade spat over? No, I doubt it. Even though Biden recently said he was considering removing some tariffs to help inflation. But even if the trade tensions continue, I think the sell-offs they've caused in the stock market have been overdone. Let me give you an example of what I mean. In 2020, the US government passed a law called the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, which essentially told Chinese companies who have listed their shares in the US, like on the NASDAQ, for example, that they have three years to open up their books to US auditors, or they'll be kicked off of US exchanges. That law went into effect in January, 2022. Now, that certainly sounds scary, but three years is plenty of time to secure a secondary listing in Hong Kong or China. And if it were to happen, does that mean that some individual U.S. investors would have a hard time buying individual Chinese companies? Yes, but it would have a really limited impact on most, since large institutional investors like mutual fund and ETF companies have no problem buying Chinese companies listed in Hong Kong. Thus, if you own Chinese equities through an ETF or mutual fund, it's very unlikely to have any impact. Lots of companies already have secondary listings in Hong Kong, but for those that don't, consider this. The vast majority of U.S. investors who own Chinese equities through ETFs and mutual funds will still be able to own them even if they have to relist in Hong Kong. Companies might be cut off from a few U.S. investors, but they'd be gaining access to all of the Chinese investors who can buy stocks listed in Hong Kong, but not stocks listed in the U.S. So I think there's actually a way that this negative could turn into a positive. But even if that doesn't happen for most companies, like if they already have a secondary listing there, I just don't think it'll have that big an impact on most companies, especially on their actual business operations. And even if I'm wrong, news headlines around delisting have already caused a lot of turmoil in Chinese equities. So a lot of negativity is already priced in. While the trade tensions between the US and China could last for decades, I think there are some areas where more negativity has been priced in than what's justified. And that is reason number two that I'm excited about Chinese equities right now. The next reason Chinese equities have been down is due to China's own regulations. I would mark the start in November 2020 when they blocked the IPO of Ant Financial. Ant is the fintech, like digital payments and loans arm of Alibaba. There's a lot of speculation about why it was blocked, but some would say it's because Alibaba's co-founder, Jack Ma, had recently come out in public and been critical of the government. And you can't do that in China. And he completely disappeared from the public eye for three months after that. I won't say how, but I know someone who knows someone who ran into Alibaba's other co-founder, Joe Tsai, about a year ago and asked him what Jack Ma was doing now. He said he mostly spends his time painting landscapes. But I digress. That was in November 2020. And then throughout 2021, the Chinese government put in place a whole slew of regulations on key aspects of their economy. Largely, these were for noble reasons. They cracked down on property companies because their questionable business practices were a risk to the financial system and speculation in the property market was making it hard for people to afford homes. They cracked down on the private education sector because there was so much pressure to pay for these after-school programs that parents were having fewer kids just so they could afford it. But a lot of these new regulations were highly disruptive, especially for the internet companies, which were some of the biggest publicly traded Chinese companies you could buy. Collectively, a lot of these regulations have come to be known as common prosperity, which essentially aims to lift up the less fortunate. Not totally different from calls from Democrats in the U.S. to tax the rich to pay for welfare programs. For example, 
Some large companies in China have been asked to make donations to the government to help support common prosperity to the tune of billions of dollars. So the aims are similar, but the methods are different. And China only has one political party. So they don't really need to ask anyone to act. There are no Democrats and Republicans blocking each other's bills or watering them down to come to a compromise. That's part of the reason why the measures have been so much more harsh and disruptive in China than they would have been in the US. Although some politicians I'm sure would love to do similar things here if they could. So that's the backdrop for what's been driving Chinese equities down. And reason number three that I'm optimistic about Chinese equities now is that a lot of that appears to be turning a corner. With the economy slowing down a lot in 2022, the common prosperity rhetoric has been toned down a lot. In March, officials came out and reiterated their support for the internet sector. That marked the bottom of the equity market, at least for now. In April, the government resumed approving new games, which was big for their large game producers like Tencent and NetEase. In June, they ended their probe into Didi and began allowing it to accept new users again. And President Xi also made an encouraging speech about support for the economy. So, while more regulations are always possible down the line, for now the government seems to be sending strong signals that their priorities are shifting towards supporting the economy again. They see things like the internet companies laying off big chunks of their workforces and then square that with high youth unemployment rate. And I think they are legitimately concerned about the potential for social unrest. So that's leading to more business friendly policies. Once the economy is strong again, all bets are off. But for now it seems like they're switching from a more challenging regulatory regime to a friendlier one, which is usually good for the stock market. The last reason the Chinese stock market has been weak has been their insistence on sticking with the zero COVID policy. Zero COVID essentially means they have decided they do not want to just learn to live with the virus like most of the world. They want to prevent infections as much as possible. That has been highly disruptive to their economy, especially when they had to shut down Shanghai for a couple of months this year. Shanghai has about 25 million people, by the way, more than New York. They really can't abandon zero COVID entirely because they have too many unvaccinated elderly people and not enough hospital space for them all. We can speculate about when they'll have a better vaccine available, when they'll prove an American one, when they'll change their minds, but I don't know how much value there is in that. Some say maybe after the 20th party Congress in November of this year, which is the closest thing they have to elections, but I don't think anyone really knows. What we do know is that since they have been hurting their economy so much with the COVID restrictions, they have started to counteract that by easing monetary and fiscal policy lately. They're promoting more lending, lowering interest rates, giving people a variety of tax rebates and tax cuts, easing purchase requirements for homes. All of this is very good for the economy and stock market. But the real crux of why this is the fourth reason that I'm excited about the investment opportunity in Chinese equities right now is that all this stimulus and pinup demand adds up when you're severely limited in how much you can do. Remember the pandemic stimulus in the US and how it led to a really strong recovery in the markets and now people are still happy to pay $6 for a gallon of gas and $600 flights the next state over? Well, in China, we don't know when COVID restrictions will ease, but whenever that happens, I think the recovery is going to be very strong. And reason number five is that not only is China easing now, but they're easing at a time when most of the world is tightening. The US and Europe may or may not head into a recession, but I think it's fair to say that growth is at least going to slow down and there's a good chance that China's growth is going to pick up. To me, that sets up for a very positive backdrop for Chinese equities at a time when the US and Europe have a lot of challenges ahead. Now, I should mention that there are plenty of risks. Stock markets don't usually fall 50% for nothing. Here are some of the key risks that could derail my thesis on China. The way I see it, US-China trade agreements are just something we're gonna to have to live with for the foreseeable future, maybe even for the rest of our lives. Who knows? Those are always a risk. Continued periodic lockdowns are definitely a risk that could send the market down again if there's another COVID outbreak. And that will be a key risk until they abandon their zero COVID approach. Like I said, there's hope that they could do it after the party Congress, but unless they get more old people vaccinated, that could be really challenging. The recovery can still happen without them abandoning zero COVID if their system of constant testing and contact tracing is effective, but more lockdowns are possible. And one other key risk I should mention is the situation with Taiwan. I'll let you go read your history for detail, but from an investment perspective, what you need to know is that China considers Taiwan to be a rogue state that is rightfully part of China. Many in Taiwan want independence. My personal belief is that it's highly unlikely China would invade in the near future and risk going to war with the US, but it is a risk. And if that happened, the Chinese stock market would probably have one of the worst days of all time. 
Y I N N Yin with its 3x leverage could be totally wiped out or something close to that. So while there are risks, as there always are with investing, given that the stock market is down significantly over the past 16 months, the sell-off based on U.S.-China trade issues may have been overdone. China has started to relax its own regulations, especially on the beaten down internet and property sectors. The government has started easing monetary and fiscal policy, and most of the rest of the world is tightening. I think the backdrop for Chinese equities looks promising, and I put some of my own money to work in China over the past few months. If you really want to learn how to invest, check out my free webinar below called "The Nine Habits of Successful Investors." The link is below in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.